Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Sherry. I'm glad you called. Oh, you'll have to cancel me out tonight, Angel. I'm all jammed up. Mm-hmm. Some client of mine wants me to locate a missing girl. He doesn't care what it costs, so naturally I'm going to shoot the works. Once again, the adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the killer's key. It is early afternoon in New York, and in a shabby rooming house in midtown Manhattan, a nervous young man named Larry Gordon gives himself a dose of artificial <laughs> courage. Uh, then, deciding further treatment is indicated, he starts pouring again. Who is it? Me, Larry. Open up. Wait a minute, Claire. Did you get them? Everything. You, you fly to Chicago. From there, I made a reservation for you on the California limit. What name did you use? Larry Holcomb. Good. When's the plane leave? 8.25 tonight. Couldn't you get me out sooner? No. Listen, Larry, I, I still think you're making a mistake. Running away is no solution. Are you crazy? Maybe this isn't as bad as you think. It's worse. If Hunt ever lays his hands on me, that's it. I think you're wrong. Look, I worked for the man for eight years. I know how his mind operates. I never should have opened my yacht to those treasury boys in the first place. You had to, darling. Why? Was someone twisting my arm? They got enough on him to send him up for ten years. But without you, they've got no case. And don't think that Mr. Hunt doesn't know it. Now, if you want to help me pack... Larry. You think he could have been followed? No. No, I, I was very careful. Who is it? Kemper. Internal Revenue. Oh, just a minute, Mr. Kemper. Look, sweetie, they'll be awful sore if they know I told you where I was. What do you want me to do? Get in the kitchen and for Pete's sake, be quiet. All right, darling. I'm coming, Mr. Kemper. Hello, Larry. Mr. Hunt. Yes. But I thought it was... I hope you'll forgive the deception. I did it very well, don't you think? Kemper, Internal Revenue Department. You know, the stage may have lost a great talent. Listen, Mr. Hunt. I'm afraid I haven't time, Larry. I'm pretty busy these days combing internal revenue men out of my hair. I wasn't going to testify against you. You weren't? No, no, I was beating it. See, I, I, I've got the tickets right here. So you were bound for California, eh? In my humble opinion, you couldn't have chosen better. Where were you planning to stay? Why? Well, uh, someone should cancel the reservation. Since you're going elsewhere. No, no, don't. Have a pleasant journey, my boy. Yeah, I'd like to see Mr. Hunt, please. Who are you? No, Sergeant Corbin. You don't look like a soldier to me. You're right. I'm with the police. Where's Hunt? Well, it's like this, Sergeant. Uh, Bruce, did you say... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were entertaining. He ain't so entertaining. You Charles Hunt? That's right. I'm Sergeant Corbett, homicide. How morbid. 
Well, somebody's got to do the job. You ever hear of a fellow named Larry Gordon? Yes, of course. He works for me. Or should I say, he once did. Why? Well, I'm being investigated on an income tax matter, as you may have heard. Yeah, I've heard. And since Larry's going to testify against me, naturally, I don't consider him in my employ. Well, he won't need the job anyhow. Pardon? He was knocked off at three this afternoon. I can't believe it. Well, take my word for it. I saw the body. And I have an idea you saw it even before I did. You're not serious. I certainly am. We got enough evidence. Evidence? Yes. You see, by an odd coincidence, Larry's girlfriend, Claire Marlowe, was in the kitchen when you gunned him. Is that what Miss Marlowe claims? Well... Well, what? Well, it's the way we figure it. We found her fingerprints. You're evading the question. Has Miss Marlowe accused me? Well, I... I haven't spoken to her yet. Why not? She disappeared. <laughs> she must have been scared to death. The fact remains, until you discover Miss Marlowe, you have absolutely no case. Don't worry. We'll find her. And when we do... And when you do, give me a call. Okay, hon. I'll be seeing you shortly. And then we'll see how... You're creating a draft, Sergeant. Well, Bruce? You heard. How can I help it? I'm not deaf. What do you think? I think when they find Claire Marlowe, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. On the other hand, suppose I find her first. Who was that private detective Logan mentioned the other day? You mean Mike Waring? See the one they call the Falcon? Yeah. Well, uh, be a good boy and look up his address. I think I've got a case for him. That's the situation, Mr. Waring. So you see my problem. No, I'm afraid I don't, Mr. Hunt. Isn't it obvious? I want you to locate this Claire Marlowe. You said the police are looking for her. Unfortunately, I haven't much confidence in them. Mm -hmm. Well, the jails are loaded with people who thought that. Uh, nevertheless, I'd like to see you take the assignment. I don't like it. Why not? It smells to me of tampering with a witness. Corporate claims this Claire Marlowe can prove you're guilty of Larry Gordon's murder. But there's another side to the coin. If Miss Marlowe saw someone else, she can establish my innocence. Yeah, I suppose that's true enough. What if the police find her first? So much the better. I just want the additional insurance. In my position, I need it. All right, Hunt. I'll do what I can. That's all I ask. You do what you can. And from that point on, it's up to me. Yeah? You the superintendent? That's right. My name is Mike Waring. I wonder if you could give me some information about one of your tenants. Who? Claire Marlowe. Hmm. You a cop? Why? So I told the other fella everything I knew. What other fella? Hmm? Tall, thin fella, about your size. Oh, you must mean Sergeant Corbett. Yep, that's his name. Mm -hmm. Well, now that you've told Corbett, why not tell me? I don't know nothing. Came home yesterday like she was scared of something, went right to her room. How long did she stay? Oh, maybe 10, 15 minutes. Did she have a grip with her when she left? Nope. Just a pocketbook. And she didn't say where she was going? Nope, and I didn't ask. I believe a fellow should mind his own... If it ain't one thing, it's another. Excuse me a second. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, what do you know? Special delivery from Claire Marlowe. Yeah, let me see that. Hey, what you doing? Uh, just a minute. Dear Herman, please don't tell anyone you've heard from me, anyone at all. I wonder if you'd be good enough to do me a favor. I've made arrangements with North American Van Lines to move my stuff on Wednesday. They know where to deliver it. My bank book is in the upper right-hand drawer of my dresser. If you take it with the enclosed withdrawal slip, I'm sure you'll have no trouble getting the money. Will you please bring it over to me at the Kenton Hotel? I'm using the name Claire O'Brien. Yeah, why does she want to use a name like that for her? Kenton Hotel, then. Hey, where are you going? I have to report to my client. You've been a great help, Herman. Thanks a million. Bruce? 
Yeah. I believe that's the phone. I believe you're right. Don't you think you should answer it? What's the point, Mr. Hunt? It's probably for you. You know something, Bruce? I'm beginning to dislike your attitude. Now answer the phone. I still say it's a waste of time. Yeah? I'd like to talk to Gerald Hunt, please. Who wants him? Mike Waring. Hold it. But I tell you, it's for you. Who is it? The Falcon. All right. Oh, uh, I don't think I'll be needing you anymore today. You mean you want me to leave? That's what I want. Well, far be it for me to hang around. I'm not one. Hello? I've got good news for you, Hunt. Really? Really. I've located Claire Marlowe. That is wonderful. She's staying at the Kenton Hotel. She's registered under the name of Claire O'Brien. I needn't tell you how happy I am with your services, Mr. Waring. Oh, I was lucky. Let's say we both were. You may have been fortunate to find Claire, but I was lucky to find you. I would have had a difficult time of it without you. I'll think nothing of it. When are you planning to see Claire? Immediately. You're familiar with the old proverb, he who hesitates is lost. Well, in my position, I can't afford to waste a second. Goodbye, Mr. Waring. Thanks ever so much. since Mike Waring reported to his client, Gerald Hunt, where Claire Marlowe could be found. And now in that young lady's hotel room... All right, all right, you guys. Come on, let's hurry it up, get out of here. Right, oh, Davis, see if you can find any prints around. Oh, I doubt it. Can I move the body now, Sarge? Now you better wait for Lewis. He may want some more pictures. Right. Hey, Levy, how you doing on that? Okay, okay. Oh, you boys carry on. I'll get it. I'd like to... Oh, Sergeant Corbett. Hey, what are you doing here? I came to see Claire Marlowe. Okay, look. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Well, is this close enough, or would you like to hold her hand? Uh, I don't think she'd get a kick out of it. Neither do I. What'd you want with her? That's a long story. Well, I never knew you to tell any other kind, so let's get started. Well, a client of mine wanted me to find her. And you did. I was lucky. I wonder. Who's your client? Well, I'd rather not say. So you'd rather not say, huh? Look, Lunkhead, an innocent girl has been murdered. Nobody knew where she was hiding out. And if you found All right, her... all right. You don't have to draw me a diagram. I was responsible. Yes, indeed. You set her up for a clay pigeon. I've known stupid jerks in my time, but of all... Look, that's... never mind the name, Sergeant. I can think of a million to call myself. Well, who's your client? Or... Maybe I can guess. Well, don't bother. Look, Mike, don't try to hold out on me. I'm not going to. I admit I was the patsy in this case. You were the patsy? What about her? Well, I know, I know. Well, someone's going to pay for it. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? I'm going to have a word with my client. After that, you can have him. Well, frankly, I doubt it will be much left. I'll be seeing you, Sergeant. <laughs> Yeah? Is Hunt in? Who are you? Never mind. I'll announce myself. Now, wait a sec. All right, Bruce. Come on in, Mr. Waring. Uh, try and keep me out. Bruce, get the gentleman a drink. Sure. What do you have, Buster? A little privacy. Suppose you leave me alone with your boss. What orders I take, I take from him. You better give him his walking papers, Hunt. Really, Mr. Waring? Aren't you being a bit high-handed? Tell him to blow! All right, Bruce. You may go. Well, as long as you put it that way. All right, now, what was the idea, Hunt? What was what idea? Don't give me any double talk. I'm in no mood for it. How dare you? It's easy. I'll show you. No. Look, you made a sucker out of me. You got me to find Claire Marlowe so you could kill her. You mean Claire's dead? As if you didn't know. But I didn't. I suppose you don't remember me phoning you at 1.30 this afternoon. I told you where you could find her. I could blow my brains out for not calling on her first. But you didn't make that mistake, did you? Let me go. Oh, sure, I'll let you go. Now, confessions are in order. You killed her, didn't you? No. Come on, Hunt. I'm going to get the truth if I have to break every bone in your body. You murdered her just as you murdered Larry Gordon. I swear I didn't. Where's your coat? I'm not going with you. Yes, you are. 
I promised to deliver you to Sergeant Corbett down the headquarters, and that's one promise I intend to keep. Now, will you go quietly? No. Okay, suit yourself. <laughs> now, come on. Get up. You've got a long, rough trip ahead of you. Hey, Matty. Yes, Sergeant. Carlin report in yet? Just about two minutes ago. Well, where's Hunt? He couldn't find him. You mean he skipped? Yeah, Carlin said the place was a shambles. Well, get a 47 out. I want every bus and train depot watch and cover the airfields. If Hunt gets away, Don't we... Don't worry, Sergeant, he won't. Hey, never mind, Matty. All right, you crumb, inside. <laughs> no, let me go. What's the idea, Mike? What's the matter with you, Sergeant? Don't you recognize him? Well, who would? He looks... Wait a minute, it's Hunt. That's right. Well, what happened? Well, he had a little accident. Go on, Hunt, sit down. Did you slug him? No, Sergeant, you know me. Well, that's why I asked. Listen, Mike. Well, look, why don't we both listen? All right, Hunt, make like a birdie. I don't know what you're talking about. Look, if I've got to bounce you around again... Hey, what's going on here? He admitted to me that he murdered Claire Marlowe. I lied. You what? I couldn't help myself, Sergeant. He would have killed me. Yes, and it's not too late now. Do you deny... I that... deny everything. I was forced to make that admission to protect myself. Under the circumstances, I felt I was justified. Look, Sergeant, could you leave us alone for a couple of minutes? Don't be a sap. Well, it's all right for you to talk, but I feel responsible for that girl's death. If I hadn't found her, she would still have been alive. I phoned him at 1.30 and I hey, told... wait a minute. When did you phone him? At 1.30. Oh, no. Why, what's the matter? But do you realize what you've done? You've just given him an alibi. Are you nuts? Claire Marlowe was killed at a quarter to one. What? 45 minutes before you called him. Well, that means... That means he couldn't have killed her. Oh. Well, look, Hunt, if I've done you an injustice... Indeed you have. Will it do any good if I said I was sorry? None at all. Good day, gentlemen. I trust I'll never see either of you again. Well, welcome home, Mr. Hunt. I see you've taken over, Bruce. I didn't think you'd mind. You like some champagne? No, thanks. You don't know what you're missing. This is the bitter end. Ah. Hey, tell me it's the only thing when you're celebrating. Is that what you're doing? Sure. Aren't you back? I'm flattered. I didn't dream you cared. Yeah, I was real worried. I had a feeling I was never going to see you again. Hey, he ought to do something about that eye. That Mike Waring can really dish it out, can't he? All right, Bruce. The joke is over. What's the meaning of this? I told you, I was celebrating. Surely you don't begrudge your ex-employee a bottle of champagne. My ex-employee? Well, the way I see it, I've been working for you for seven years. So? So I decided it was time I bettered myself. After all, this is the land of opportunity. And you feel opportunity is knocking at your door? Definitely. You sure you won't join me in a drink? Enough of this nonsense. Get me my robe. You don't seem to understand. I'm through taking orders. With what I got and on And what you... have you got on me? For one thing, you knocked off Larry Gordon and Claire Marlowe. This may come as a shock to you. But the police, I... are satisfied I had no hand in either. You see, I have an unimpeachable alibi. Is that a fact? Yes. It now develops that Miss Marlowe was murdered 45 minutes before Mr. Waring reported her whereabouts to me. Well, what do you know? I know you've been taking too much for granted. I don't think so. I have to know how it was worked. You do? Yeah. I was going through your clothes. What? Well, I thought maybe you wanted me to send them out to the cleaners. Anyway, in your pocket, I found this card. Lawrence Regan, Private Investigations. So? So I wondered what you would want with two private detectives, and just like that, it came to me. You were going to use Waring as an alibi. You're mistaken. Well, there's an easy way to check. Who are you calling? The boy Sherlock, Lawrence Regan. You're being ridiculous. Am I? Hello? Let me talk to Mr. Regan, please. Speaking? This is Bruce Webster. I work for Mr. Hunt. Well... Well, the boss would like to know whether you had any luck finding Claire Marlowe. What's the matter with the guy? Has he blown a fuse? I reported back to him at 11 o'clock this morning. 
She's at the Kenton Hotel, registered under the name of Claire O'Brien. I guess it kind of slipped his mind. What's going on here? Nothing you should worry about. Thanks a lot, anyway. Well, you win. I always do. I'm the patient type. I learned that from you. What do you want? $25,000. That's a lot of money. Well, it ain't as though I was going to throw it away. I'm going to sock it into government bonds. That 3% they pay will come in mighty handy. You're making a mistake. I don't think so. I always say the least a fella can do is be patriotic. You better get it up fast, Mr. Hunt. We don't want to keep Uncle Sam waiting. <laughs> Sergeant, I don't get it at all. Well, you would if I had my way. You ruined everything. Look, are you sure Claire Marlowe died at a quarter to one? Positive. The desk clerk at the hotel heard the shots. Did she have any other enemies? No. This thing's tied up with the Larry Gordon killing for sure. That doesn't make sense. Well... There was no way in the world for the... Hello. That you, Waring? Yes, who's this? Bruce Webster. Who? I work for Hunt, remember? Oh, yeah, I'm... I just thought you might be interested. I'm terminating my employment. That's supposed to mean something to me? It might mean a lot. If you could dig up some cash, I could let you know my reason. What are you talking about? Well, wouldn't you like to know how Hunt made a chump out of you? I certainly would. How much dough can you raise? <laughs> I'm not in Hunt's class. No, but every little bit helps. Could you lay your hands on ten grand? Don't be ridiculous. Five? I've got $720 in the bank. Fine, I'll take it. Now, wait a minute. Come on, Waring. Make up your mind. Where are you? I got a little place at the Fortuna Apartments on West 93rd. Drop around when you're in the neighborhood. Okay. Don't go away. I'll be in the neighborhood in 20 minutes. That you, Waring? Yeah. Just a second. Come on in. Mr. Hunt. Surprised? Yeah, I thought I saw the last of you. You thought wrong. What's the idea? It's fairly simple. I'm a man who hates loose ends. Naturally, with you dangling about. You wouldn't. Oh, you recognize the gun. Yes, it's the same one I used on Larry Gordon and Claire Marlowe. You'll never get away with it. The cops will know for sure. You're concerned for me. You needn't worry. You see, I've taken the liberty of preparing a note in which you confess to both murders. You're nuts. When the police break in, they'll find the note and the murder gun. Naturally, it'll be in the traditional position for suicide. They'll never buy it. He had no motive to knock off Larry Gordon. You have the way I've explained it in this note. Seems you were madly in love with Claire. When she spurned you for Larry, you decided to rid yourself of the competition. As for Claire, she was a witness to the act. So regretfully, you had to dispose of her, too. Isn't that poetic? Listen, Hunt. I wish I could, my boy. But time is of the essence. No, don't. Fifteen minutes have passed since Mike promised to call on Bruce Webster. Now we find Sergeant Corbett helping him keep that promise. Uh, this must be it. Yeah. Suppose he won't talk. Just leave everything to me. I left Hunt to you, and what happened? Sure he said he'd meet you here? Yes, positive. I told him I'd be over in 20... Look, get out of the way. What are you doing? What does it look like? Don't you know it isn't polite to peek through keyholes? No, but it could be awfully interesting. <clears throat> what do you see? Give me a hand with this door. Well, what was it? Come on, come on. Put your shoulder to it. One, two... <laughs> Smoke. Yeah. Well, what did he want to do that for? Don't ask me. I'm a stranger here myself. Hey, wait a minute. What do you make of this? To whom it may concern, this was the only way. I killed Larry Gordon. It was all Claire Marlowe's fault. She led me on. I thought with Larry out of the way, we'd have a deal. But I was a chump. Don't bother looking for any relatives. I haven't... Hey, cut that out, Mike. I was only going through his pocket. Well, you know better. I just wanted to see what he had on him. Well? well? Someone was here before me. All he's got on him are these two keys. What do you make of it? 
Well, one's obviously for his grip, the other for his car. No, this doesn't add up. What do you mean? He didn't commit suicide. But look at the gun. You look at it. I tell you, this was engineered. By whom? By Hunt, of course. It's... Can you prove that? What, to you? Where's my percentage? Let's find someone who'll give me better odds. <laughs> When I was up at Bruce's a few hours ago... And you admit you were there. Why should I deny it? He complained of not feeling well this evening. Naturally, the least I could do was chauffeur him home. And when you left? He seemed perfectly all right. I never dreamt he contemplated suicide. I still don't understand why. Well, maybe this note will clear things up. Well, it may concern. There's only where I... Oh, so that explains it. Yes, it would seem to... I never realized he was involved with Claire. Uh, well, things are seldom what they seem. For instance, when we broke into Bruce's room, it looked as though he committed suicide. But you don't believe it? No. You told me you found the gun in his hand? Yes. And it was the same weapon that was used on Larry Gordon and Claire Marlowe? Mm-hmm. Well, I should imagine that would take care of everything. No, not quite. There was one thing missing. When Corbett and I got to Bruce's room, the door was locked. Well? Well, if he committed suicide, it had to be locked from the inside. Obviously. Well, then what happened to the key? That's right. It wasn't in the lock because you were able to peek through the keyhole. And it wasn't on him or in the room. That means the door must have been locked from the outside and the killer absentmindedly walked off with the key. Look, Mr. Waring. All right, Sergeant. Go through his pockets. No, you can't. Who can't? Well, what have we got here? It's all a mistake. Yeah, you said it, friend. And the beautiful part of it is it only takes one to land you in the chair. All right, Sergeant. He's all yours. my father used to say, another day, another dollar. And believe me, you didn't earn this one. I did all the work. Well, you schlump, you should talk. You gave Hunt that alibi. You're out of your mind. If it hadn't been me, it would have been some other private dick. Come again? Look, it all comes down to one thing. Hunt had two of us trying to locate Claire. He probably waited until the other boy came through for him before he even hired me. Well, well what was the point? Give himself that alibi. After all, when I told you I reported to him after the girl was murdered, it didn't seem possible he could have been responsible. Well, I still say... Oh, wait, wait a minute, hold everything. Well, what's the matter? I just thought of something. I never got paid. Huh? By Hunt for finding Claire. Sue him. Sue him? He's going to the chair. So what? If I were you, kiddo, I'd really make trouble for him. <laughs> Good night, Mike. Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Carol. I'm glad you called. Now, you'll have to count me out tonight, Angel. Some boy I know just bought himself a gun. And unless he's stopped, he aims to get a big bang out of life. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon... Dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the Grand Gamble. It is early morning in New York, the time of day generally reserved for slumber there's plenty of action at Dana's, a gambling spot on Manhattan's east side. All of which impresses the two gentlemen standing by the roulette wheel. Well, what do you say, Mr. Calvin? You seen enough? More than enough, Eli. How long has it been going on? Jackie tells me six weeks. What do you figure the take is? Around six or seven G's a night. Not bad. Where does Dana keep himself? In the office, over there. What do you say we drop in and congratulate him? Now? Now. Maybe we better wait. I said now. You're the boss. Yeah, I'm the boss, Eli. Let's not forget it. What do you want me to do? Just stay out here and see that we're not disturbed. Yes? Hello, Dana. Calvin. Yeah. 
Well, I must say this is a surprise. I meant it to be. Oh, uh, keep your hands off that buzzer. I just assumed we weren't interrupted. Now, look, Calvin. Sit down. You can't come in here oh, and... Oh, can't. Oh. Now, look, you crumb, this is my territory. From 86th Street to 94th. Since when? Since all the time. You're going to close up shop. And if I don't? I'll do it for you. I'll give you 24 hours. You'll give who 24 hours? Well, aren't you the sly one? Aren't I? Now, do you leave quietly or do they carry you out? You better put that gun away, Dana. It's out of character. Is it? Yeah. You're not mad enough to pull a trigger. Go on, I dare you. Well, what are you waiting for? You got a right to gun me? Shoot. You can tell him it was a heist. I'm warning you, Calvin. You're warning me. Give me that gun. Let me go. Come on, drop it. Oh! You shouldn't have tried to bluff me, fella. Because I really got a great hand. Come on, Zayna, get up. You can't quit now. I got time for another couple of rounds. Yes. Oh, you're home early. Daddy. Daddy, what happened? Nothing. But look at it. I tell you, it's nothing, Joan. Let me sit down. I'm going to call a doctor. You'll do nothing of the kind. Tomorrow. But your face. It... I had a little accident, that's all. I fell down at the club. Can't I get you anything? Just the phone book. Who do you want? I'll look it up for you. See if there's an Al Romero listed. Al Romero? Yes. Couldn't be the same one. Couldn't be what same one? The Al Romero I read about. The one who was tied up with murder, Incorporated. No, no, this is a different boy. You're not telling the truth. Okay, so it's the same one. And I got a job for him. You happy now? Oh, you don't mean that. Don't give odds, Johnny. Daddy, what's come over you? I've seen the light. I just learned when you're in my racket, you can't use kid gloves. Vince Calvin was around to see me tonight. Calvin? Yeah. That's why I look this way. So from now on, I play his rules. You don't know what you're saying. Try to understand, Joan. I'm doing this for you. I want you to have the best of everything. But I don't want it that way. You don't way. get it any other way. Mr. Calvin taught me that. Now, give me that phone. No, I won't let you do it. You won't? <gasps> Sorry, baby. You might as well learn the facts of life now. Information? I'd like the phone number of Al Romero. Oh, oh Angel, you don't know what you... Oh, go away. Oh, for Pete's sake. Wait a minute. Where's my robe? I said, wait a minute. What's How the... How's your mic wearing? Well, it all depends. Depends? On the time of day. Before seven, I'm not myself. I know it's late, but I've got to see you. Well, come back in the morning. That's no good. Time is of the essence. I don't know what I'll do oh, with you. Oh, well, now take it easy. But you don't understand. Well, I never will at this rate. Now sit down. Thank you. I suppose I should introduce myself. I suppose you should. My name is Joan Andrews. Joan Andrews. Yes. If you say so. Well, don't you believe me? I never question a lady's word at four o'clock in the morning. But I wouldn't advise you to come back at five with that story. Why? Well, if you're Joan Andrews, how come the initials on your purse are J.D.? Oh, this... This belongs to a friend. Mm-hmm. All right, Angel, have it your way. I tell you, it's the truth. Well, let's hear the rest. Well... I'm engaged to a man named Vince Calvin. Vince Calvin? You? Do you know him? Yeah. So I won't offer my congratulations. Well, Vince has been threatened. How do you know? He told me. Well, go on. That's all there is to it. I want you to see nothing happens to him. <sighs> now, Angel, enough is enough. You can't expect me to buy that. I swear it's true. Does Calvin know you're here? No, and he mustn't find out. He thinks he can take care of himself. Well, from what I know of that gent, he can. But I can't afford to gamble. You've got to protect him. Why don't you go to the cops? Because I don't want any publicity. Vince would kill me if there was. 
And this is the man you're engaged to? I didn't mean it that way. How did you mean it? Look, Mr. Waring, it all comes down to this. Either you want the case or you don't. I get $100 a day plus expenses. That's all right. I'll pay you in advance. Hey, you're really on the level about this, aren't you? Well, what did you think? Well, frankly, Joan, I don't know. Where can I reach oh, you? Oh, don't at... bother calling me. I'll call you. Okay. But keep in touch with the office. I hope for your sake there won't be any startling developments. <laughs> That's funny. You must have money in the bank, Eli. You're talking to yourself. There's a blue Nash behind us. It's a very attractive color. So what? I'd swear that was the same car I saw on Broadway. You're imagining things. I tell you, it's the same one, Calvin. He's trailing us. Turn up 84th. It's one way, going east. That's all right. I'll take care of the ticket. Let's see if he makes the same mistake. Well? What did I tell you? He's coming right after us. Okay. Stop right here. Give me a gun. What are you going to do? Wait for our friend. Yeah, but don't you think we... I don't... think you worry too much. Stay here. What's the matter, comrade? Having trouble? How's that? I asked if you were having trouble. Oh, well, yeah. I guess I lost my way. I guess you did. Get out. What for? I want to look at you. Now, listen, Frank. Are you going to get out of that car? Is that thing loaded? What do you think? I think I'd better get out. Now, uh, walk over to that lamppost. Sure, anything you say. Hold it. That's fine. Just keep your hands where they are. How's this? Well, uh... What's the idea of wearing... <laughs> If it isn't Vince Calvin, certainly is a small world. Too small. Why are you tailing me? Me? Tailing you? Eli saw you on Broadway. No, no, it must have been two other guys. I was just headed home. So you go the wrong way up a one-way street? Well, we all make mistakes. And you're going to pay for yours. <laughs> I wouldn't try that again. Who put you on to tailing me? None of your business. I got a good mind. I wouldn't try it. Well, keep out of my way, you understand? I don't like being crowded. Oh, with 10 million people in town, you've got to expect I it. I mean it, Waring. If I catch you within gunshots, so help me, I'll let you have it. Now, on your way. What for? I like it here. Okay. Maybe I can arrange for you to hang around for quite a while. <laughs> Come. I'm looking for Vince Calvin. Who are you? If I wanted you to know, I would have had them announce me. Eli! Eli! If you're calling your stooge, you're wasting your time. Where is he? What difference does it make? I look, comrade, I don't know what your game is. Solitaire. And I play it with this. What's the idea of the gun? This is how I deal him. Would you like to see one off the top? What made Dana think I'd fall for this? Huh? Well, didn't Dana send you around? You can't expect me to divulge the name of my client. That wouldn't be ethical. Now, look, Buster, you're not kidding me. I don't frighten easy. You mean to tell me you're not scared? Not a bit. Glad to hear that. There's one thing I admire. It's a guy with plenty of moxie. It's a pity to have to spill yours. Oh, I... A real pity. We Americans have been justly accused of living at too fast a pace. Not only are we living too fast, we are also driving too fast. On the highways, speed is the number one killer. It takes more than half of the lives lost in traffic accidents in many states. Last year, speeding drivers caused 15,000 deaths in the United States. That year, more than 500,000 persons were injured in automobile accidents blamed on excessive speed. That is the bloody price tag on too much speed, the cost that you may pay sooner or later for a few minutes saved by speeding. 
slow down for safety's sake. And you'll be doing your part in the current campaign against the number one killer on the highways. Initiate and support your local enforcement drives against speeders. And remember, drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Three hours have passed since Mike Waring had his run-in with Vince Calvin, the man he was hired to protect. Now, at Mike's apartment, we find him recuperating from the encounter. Yeah? Hiya, Mike. Oh, what do you want, Sergeant? Uh, Now, that's no way to greet an old and trusted friend. Hey, what happened to you? Never mind. Hey, let me see. Will you get your hands off me? Well, if I was you, I'd trade this head in for another. Or better still, you could grow one. Look, Sergeant, I'm in no mood for kibitzing. Well, looks like someone really did a job on you. Well, you ought to see the other guy. I did. He looks even worse. What are you mumbling about? Why'd Calvin slug you? How did you know it was Calvin? Now, you're not the only detective in the crowd. Well, when I get my hands on him... I can arrange that. He's at the morgue. The morgue? He was gunned at 9 o'clock tonight. Is that on the level? You know I never joke about things like murder. Who did it? Did you? Don't be an idiot. Well, you got to admit we can make out a pretty convincing case. After all, he bounced you around. I went around killing everyone who bounced me. Yeah, I know, I know. You could fill your own personal cemetery. Still and all, it doesn't look so good for you. Who says so? Lieutenant Coram. Oh, that jerk. That jerk can pull you in and throw away the key. What gave with you and Calvin? I was tailing him for a client. Why? She thought he was in danger. Oh, she must have had inside information. Who is she? Joan Andrews. You say that like you don't believe it. Well, I don't. So even though you knew she was a phony, you took the case. Oh, she may have been a phony, but her money wasn't. What'd she have against Calvin? Nothing. Look, Mike, if you're holding out on me... Why should I? She told me they were engaged. And you bought that story? Calvin's a married man. Well, I didn't know that. For a smart guy, there's a lot you didn't know. You better find this client of yours. Sure, tell me how. Well, that's your headache. But you better dig her up and do it fast. Lieutenant Coram. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. How did you learn about my run-in with Calvin? Eli told me. You mean Eli Proctor, Calvin Stooge? Yeah. (laughs) He knows all about Calvin's operations, doesn't he? Including the one Calvin did on you. Yeah. Well, maybe he knows something about my mysterious client, too. You want to join me? No, no, thanks. I've already talked to him. But don't let that stop you. Now, you go right ahead. Have your fun. You sure you won't join me in a drink, Waring? Positive. Uh, Ah, you don't know what you're missing. Well, I'll take my chances, Eli. Why did you tell the cops Calvin slugged me? It was my duty, wasn't it? You're the kind of a guy who never forgets it. Not me. Well, let's see how good that memory is. Did Calvin have any enemies? Nary a soul. Just a big, lovable guy, huh? That was Vince. We're really going to miss him around here. Yeah, I'll bet. Who's going to handle the business now that he's gone? I don't know, but if his wife wants me, I'll be available. Well, that's big of you. Well, that's the sort of a guy I am. Mm -hmm. She'd be a lot easier to swindle than Vince was. You want to watch that mouth, fella? (laughs) I'm sorry. You see, I washed it this morning. Can't seem to do a thing with it. Know a girl about five feet two, blue eyes, blonde hair, pretty? No, but I'd love to meet her. Me too. How did she know that Calvin was in trouble? Maybe she was planning to knock him off. So she hired me to prevent it? You didn't do too good a job, did you? That was Calvin's fault. He never should have slugged me. If I were around, this might not have happened. Well, that's life for you. Or death. What does Mrs. Calvin look like? You're barking up the wrong tree, Waring. She's a redhead. Mm -hmm. Did he have any girls on the string? Nope. Come on, Eli, open up. Tell you, he didn't have any trouble with a dame. But he did have trouble with a man. Who? Arthur Dana. The guy who runs the club on 86? Yeah, Vince closed him up. Well, then Dana might have had it in for Calvin. I wouldn't be at all surprised. Well, thanks a lot, Eli. You've been a big help. You're not leaving already. Yeah, but I'll be back. See what you can dream up in the meantime. (laughs) 
Yes? Well, if it isn't Joan Andrews. What? Well, that's the name you used 36 hours ago. Are you out of your mind? If I am, Angel, it's little girls like you who are responsible. Get out. Now, now, Joanie, I didn't throw you out when you came calling on me. You're crazy. You don't remember coming to my apartment at 4 o'clock yesterday morning? I came to your apartment? Yes, you did. And you used the name Joan Andrews. Just to keep the record straight, what are you calling yourself today? Look, are you going to get out of here? Wait a minute, of course. You must be Dana's daughter. I was a sap not to have seen it before. Why did you hire me to protect Vince Calvin? Vince Calvin? I never even heard of the man. Well, your father did. Were you afraid he was going to kill Calvin? I don't know what you're talking about. Look, Angel, I rarely slug a woman, but in your case, I'll be glad to make an exception. Don't you dare. Now, where's your father? He's not here. Dana! Dana! I tell you, he's not here. He flew to the coast on business yesterday morning. What time? He caught the 4.30 plane. But Calvin was killed at 9. Well, that proves my father couldn't have done it. You're lying. If you don't believe me, check with Creighton Airlines. Thanks for the advice, Angel. That's one tip I intend to take. Hello? That's you, Johnny? Daddy, where are you calling from? Los Angeles. What'd you think? When are you coming home? Maybe a week or ten days. Try to get back as soon as possible. Why? What's the matter? I can't talk on the phone. Where are you staying? Why? I want to write to you. Vince Calvin was murdered yesterday. I know. I heard about it out here. Well, Mike Waring is investigating the matter. Falcon? How did he get involved? Well, that's a long story. I'll go into it in my letter. What's the name of your hotel? Oh, it won't do you any good, honey. I'm checking out. I don't like it here. But how will I reach you? Well, you can't. You'll have to wait for me to get in touch with you. But Mike Waring thinks... I that... don't care what he thinks. You told him I was on the coast? Yes. Well, there's my alibi. When he hears I called you from... Daddy, that was your dime being released into the payphone. Uh, listen, Joan... You're in New York. You've been here all the time. Forget it. But if you were in New York... I told you to forget it. Take care of yourself, Joni. Don't worry about Mr. Waring. I'll take care of him. All right, ladies and gentlemen, get your bets down. The gentleman is coming out. And eight's the point. I got two bits, says he's right, Eli. Go away, boy, you bother me. You busy? What does it look like? And the gentleman got himself a big ten. I would a word with you. Would you? Yeah, unless you want me to make a nuisance of myself out here. Jackie. Yeah? Take over the table. All right. I knew you'd see the lights. Follow me. I did that once, and it didn't work out so well. Huh? The other night, wound up with a peach of a headache, remember? It was your own fault. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is quite a layout. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, you really moved in, haven't you? Come on, Waring, get to the point. Well, I was wondering if you had any more leads. Leads? Yeah, for Calvin's murder. What about his missus? What about her? You think she might have knocked him off? Are you nuts? Where's her motive? Oh, she might have wanted to get her hands on all this. Don't talk like a schmo. She don't even know what this thing is worth. Well, that's going to make it awfully convenient for you. Now listen, Waring. Well, isn't it? If you came here to needle me... Apparently I succeeded, eh? All right, can you think of anyone else who might have had it in for Calvin? What's wrong with Dana? Nope, he's got an alibi. Who says so? I do. He was on his way to Los Angeles at the time. Couldn't he have hired someone else to do the job? Hmm? A torpedo. Ooh, I never thought of that. Well, it's time you did. Yes, you may have something there. Of course, there's only one thing wrong with that theory. What? If Dana hired a pro to do the job, he wouldn't quit now. What do you mean? Well, his daughter must have told him I was shoving my nose into this business. If Dana felt I was a source of danger to him, he'd give orders for that gunman to go to work again. Well? Well, the mere fact that I'm alive proves you're wrong. Still, it was an original thought, Eli. Let me know if you get any more bright ideas. Come on in, Waring. What Just the... keep your hands where they are. Who the devil are you? Me? I'm a nobody. Not with that gun in your mitt. That makes you a big man. Yeah, I guess it does. Kick the door shut. Hmm? I said kick it shut. Sure, anything you say. Now, 
Park yourself on that sofa. Hey, don't I know you from someplace? I don't think so. Yeah, you must be the citizen who got Calvin. How did you figure that out? Oh, I'm real smart. Well, then maybe you can answer this. If I'm the guy who killed Calvin and you know it, what do you suppose is going to happen to you? Well, that's a very good question. Ain't it? I'll give you two minutes to dream up the answer. Any day, any hour now, perhaps this very minute, a tragic moment in our nation's history will occur. Somewhere, a careless driver will wreck an automobile, or a jaywalking pedestrian will be struck down. Another life will be snuffed out in an automobile accident, suddenly, needlessly. Why will this particular accident stand out in history? Because for the first time, this death will tip the balance scales of the two mass killers of Americans, war and the automobile downward on the automobile side. Each of these three wholesale killers, destroyers of life, has killed about 1,005,000 Americans. War took its vast toll in nearly 177 years, the automobile in a mere 52 years. Once the automobile fatality side of the scale tilts downward, it will probably stay down, unless you and I, as drivers and pedestrians, become safer and act to reduce this senseless slaughter on the highways Automobiles will keep on killing Americans at a far faster rate than wars. What can we do about it? We can demand that our civic organizations and communities act immediately to make drivers more careful and the highway safer. Drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Just 90 seconds has passed since Mike Waring entered his apartment to find it occupied. Worse yet, the new tenant moved in with all the necessary hardware. Well, what do you say, Waring? You look like you've been thinking. You come up with the answer? What answer? What's going to happen to you? Oh, well, if I were judging solely by appearances, I'd say someone doesn't want me around. <laughs> Smart boy. Mm. Would you mind telling me who you're working for? What difference does it make? Well, I'd hate to get sent to my grave without knowing who's responsible. That's the way it wakes out sometime. Was it Dana? Where do you want it? Do I have a choice? Sure, I ain't a bad guy. If you leave it to me, I'll put it right in the back of your head. That way you won't feel a thing. Thanks, loads. I mean it. I never had a complaint yet. I bet. Okay, on your feet. Well, what's the point? I'm only going to get knocked off him again. Okay, wise guy, try to do your favor. I'm ready to return it. If I were you, I'd drop that gun. Would you? Yeah. Don't look now, but there's an ugly police sergeant right behind you. Think I'm going to fall for that tired routine? Why not? What? Watch it, sergeant. <laughs> Corbett. I'm all right. What about our friend? Well, I can't say as much for him. Is he? Yep. This time, Corbett, you really called your shots. Hello, Eli. Waring. Yeah, I want you to meet a friend of mine. No, don't bother introducing us, Mike. We've met six years ago, wasn't it, Eli? When you and Calvin first started. He had a joint on West 8th Street. It was just a little... Uh, let's not start reminiscing, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I got carried away. Sit down. No, thanks. We won't be staying long. We just dropped by to thank you. What for? Well, if it hadn't been for you, we never would have cleaned up this mess. What are you mumbling about? We solved Calvin's murder. Swell. But I don't well, see how... Well, you were the one who advanced the theory that there might be a professional killer involved. And you were right. Did you find him? Yep. Waiting for me at my place. His name was Tony Abruzzio. At least, that's how he's been identified at the morgue. The morgue? Well, it was either him or Waring, and uh, like a fool, I made the wrong choice. I doubt it. I think you were aiming for me, but you're such a rotten shot. Look, if you guys got nothing better to oh, do... Oh, we have, Eli. You see, before Tony died, he named you as the party who hired him. You're lying. He even found your check on his body. You couldn't. I paid him in... Cash? <laughs> All right, Sergeant. What are you waiting for? Make out like a cop and do your duty. Oh, 
I suppose I should apologize, Mr. Waring. But you see the position I was in. I was afraid my father intended to kill Calvin. And that's why you hired me? Yes. Well, didn't you know your father was in New York during the time of the murder? Well, I only discovered that later. It seems he canceled out on his trip. Then when he heard that Calvin was murdered... He got nervous and decided to play it as though he were in Los Angeles all along. Mm-hmm. Well, that was silly. He played right into Eli's hands. He was just lucky that Eli gave himself away. Now, that I don't understand. Well, you see, Angel, it all came down to motive. Eli was the only one who actually profited by Calvin's murder. With Calvin gone, it was a cinch for him to move in and take over the club. But what about Mrs. Calvin? No, she didn't figure to give him any trouble. He even admitted to me that she didn't know the score. Weren't you guessing all this? Well, sure, but I had nothing else to go on. Then when Eli suggested a professional gunman might have done the actual job for your dad, I decided to do a little deep-sea fishing. I don't follow you. Well, I told him that if your father was behind the kill, he'd certainly take care of me. Oh, so that's why he sent that Tony Abruzzo around, hmm? Mm-hmm. He really rose to the bait. So I got together with Corbett and laid a trap. Then it was no accident that the sergeant turned out. Oh, no, he was behind me right along. And I still am. Oh, no. <laughs> Just thought I'd see how you're getting along. <laughs> Mind if I join you? I certainly do. Didn't you ever hear two's company and three's a crowd? No. No, did you just make it up? Oh, now listen. Wait, you... there's an easy way to handle this. Oh, but you're not leaving. Well, you two get along so well, it would be a pity to let a woman break up your happy home. Good night, Mike. The Case of the Murdering Misses. The Case of the Murdering Misses. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that when money is your target in life, you give people something to shoot at. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Chuck Webster as Sergeant Corbin. This program came from New York. Fred Collins speaking. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Lois... I'm glad you called. Well, you'll have to give me a rain check, Angel. Some people are throwing a brawl and they insist I attend. Mm-hmm. If I'm not there to be the life of the party, they're going to be the death of me. Once again, the Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the murdering Mrs. It's early evening in New York, and in a shabby kitchen at the Belmore, a blonde named Laura McKenna prepares dinner for her man. But this is one meal neither of the McKennas are destined to eat. That you, Mac? Yeah. Oh, wait a second, honey. Hiya, doll. Take off your coat. Dinner will be ready in 20 minutes. Paul Newcomb, drop off a package for me. Yeah, it's on the table. Mm-hmm. Mac. Ain't it a beauty? Hey, where'd that gun come from? Borrowed it from Paul. I'm going back in business. No. Yeah. Paul saw a good thing on 84th Street, a jewelry shop run by a fellow named Vance. And he talked you into heisting it? He could have gotten a hundred guys. I won't let you do it. Don't talk like a jerk. I jerks. mean it, Mac. If anything happened to you... Nothing's going to happen. A kid could handle this job. That's what you said in San Francisco before they sent you up. Well, it was an accident. Couldn't happen again. Well, we're not going to find out. Well, what do you suggest? There's eight bucks left in the kitty. We'll get by. I don't want us to just get by. How do you think I feel when I see dames who don't have half your looks parading around with furs and diamonds? Do you hear me complaining? I'm satisfied. Well, I'm not. You're not going to do it, Mac. 
Let Paul get himself another boy. Look, that's enough. The discussion's over. No, it's not. If you step out that door, sir, help me, I'll call the cops. What did you say? <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. No, you were right, Mac. I didn't mean what I said. You know, if anything happened to I you, know, I... I know. Don't worry, I'll be back in an hour. Let me go with you. It'll be easier with the two of no, us. No, no. You're afraid. No, I'm not afraid, but you'd only be in the way. Give us a kiss for luck, baby. I'm off to work. I'm terribly sorry, sir, but we're closed for the night. Oh, come on, mister. Give me a break, will you? It's my girl's birthday. But I've put all my stock away. Well, how long would it take you to open your safe? I saw an engagement ring in your window this afternoon that was just perfect. An engagement ring? Yeah, it was marked $850. You'd be crazy about it. Well, in that case... Thanks a lot, Mr. Vance. If you'll just wait a minute. Sure. Do you, uh, you happen to remember how much it weighed? One and a half carats. One and a half, hmm? Suppose I wanted something bigger, say, uh, about four. Oh, I'm sure we can accommodate you. Uh, here we are. Now, if you just look over this tray... Yeah, but why don't I do it at home? What? All right, Vance, keep your hands in the showcase. This is a heist. But really... Just keep you... them where they are. You're making a grave mistake, young man. Now, if you listen to me, you... What's that? I... I, I don't know. You don't know. Aren't you the cute when you stepped on the alarm? Uh, no! You couldn't leave well enough alone. you fellas let's hurry it up and get out of here myers be sure you get a shot of the showcase greetings men oh no wouldn't you know it well the little sergeant pulaski where's corbett he's lucky he's got a day off what are you doing here wearing i represent the insurance company well fellas we can all go home now the falcon is on the case all right. oh, you better stick around man you might learn something what have you got steve darn little what about Vance? He died an hour ago. Tough. Did he talk before he went? Not much. Here's a description of his killer. Blonde hair, blue eyes, five foot nine. Small mole on right cheek, V-shaped scar on left wrist. V-shaped scar, that's funny. What's so funny about it? Sounds like a boy I used to know in San Francisco. Well? Well, it couldn't be him. Last I heard, Mac was serving five to ten at San Quentin. Mac who? Mac McKenna. What made you think it's him? That scar. He got it in the knifing. But it couldn't be the same one. Couldn't it? Suppose I told you that Mr. McKenna is now guesting in our fair city. He's what? They got it from a stoolie last week. He's living with his wife at the Belmore. Oh, no, it sounds too easy. Well, I'm going to pick him up just for luck. Come along and see how it's done. <laughs> That you, Paul? Yeah. All right, wait a minute. Hello, Mac. Hey, what the... Uh... No, I can't say I do. The name is Waring. We met on the coast some years back. So? So, now that we've got me identified, I'd like you to meet Sergeant Steve Pulaski here. Yeah, looks like you were right, Steve. Looks like. What are you babbling about? Steve got a rumble. You were in town, and I thought it was impossible. Last I heard, you were still in San Francisco. I didn't like the climate. Well, I don't think you like New York's any better, particularly around 84th Street. Come again? A jewelry shop up there was heisted last night, and the proprietor was killed. I don't know anything about it. No. And how do you account for the fact that Steve found your fingerprints on the showcase? You're crazy. Why? You wore gloves? Oh, you're nuts. Wait a minute. I'll prove it to you. Watch him, Sergeant. Hold it, boy. I just wanted to get my coat. Don't strain yourself. Get it, Mike. You bet. Well, what have we got here? What is it, a thirty-eight? Yeah. And it's been fired recently. All right, Sergeant, since Mac is so fond of jewelry, let him try your bracelets for size. Hey, McKenna. What do you want? You got company. Mac. 
Hiya, Laura. You're going to have ten minutes. Let me look at you. How are you, honey? Did I change much? I'm going to get you out. Hmm. You got a file in your bag? I'll work it somehow. I'll get the best lawyer. Ah, no. Save your money, baby. But if I hire... The... Look, Laura, I never kidded you for a minute. I'm a going gosling. No. We got to face the facts, baby. They got me dead to rights. They got my gun. Someone ratted. No. Nope. It was Paul. Nothing of the kind. It was a fluke. You remember Mike Waring? The private detective they call the Falcon? Mm-hmm. Well, it seems that he represents the insurance company. He got lucky. He saw the description Vance gave, and he thought of me. It couldn't happen that way. No, but it did. I don't believe it. I got a feeling, Paul... Look, forget it. Paul had nothing to do with it. It was Mike Waring. Well, I'll pay him back for this. Hmm? I'll get him for you, Mac, if it's the last thing I do. Now, don't talk like a I jerk. tell you, I'll get him. How? Don't ask me, but I'll manage it some way. That you can depend on. Wasting your time, mister. Huh? Mr. Waring ain't in. Well, that's a nice how do you do. I was supposed to meet him here. Are you Sergeant Pulaski? That's right. Well, he told me to give you this note. Yeah. Dear Steve, sorry I had to rush off, but the insurance company wanted to see me on the Vance Heist. Eddie, the elevator boy, will let you in. It's a bottle in my desk. Help yourself. You Eddie? Yeah, that's right. Got a pass key, or do I use mine? Are you sure it'll be all right with Mr. Waring? Here, yeah, look for yourself. Eddie, I'll let you in. I guess it's okay. Hey, you are. Thanks a lot, Eddie. You've been a great... <gasps> Sergeant! Sergeant! Back to the adventures of the Falcon. Three hours have passed since Sergeant Steve Pulaski was killed while entering Mike Waring's apartment. And now at the scene of the crime. Uh, All right, Doc, you can move the body anytime you want. Mind if I take a peek first, Sergeant? Oh, no, he ain't going to tell you anything, Mike. Well, whoever did it wasn't taking any chances. They were probably standing right by that closet. Yeah, yeah. The minute the door opened, they fired. Now, that's what your elevator boy said. Did Eddie get a peek at the killer? Oh, I haven't talked to him yet. Well, what are we waiting for? Eddie! You want me, Mr. Waring? Yeah, come over here. I don't feel so good. And I don't blame you. Oh, you should have seen it, Mr. Waring. It was awful. Every time I think of it, Oh, I... don't. You better give him a drink. Yeah. Here you are, Eddie. Uh, I don't want it. Come on, come on. This is good for what ails you. Now, tell me exactly what happened. Well, I, I just opened the door for him, and he walked in. Then there was the shot. Now go on. That's all I remember. Didn't you see anyone in here? No, I just ran down the hall and got Dr. Wilburn. All I could think of was getting help. Oh, please, Mr. Wayne, can I go now? Yeah, all right. I, I, I'll be downstairs if you want me. Well, he was a great help. He did the best he could. Oh, but I can't tell you how sorry I am about this. If I had been here... You would have gotten it instead. Yeah, I guess so. Who do you know that loves you this much? Offhand, I can't think of a soul. Come on, Mike, use your head. You must have annoyed someone recently. Well, I do that once a week. Well, one of them took it real personally. Uh, the only one who comes to my mind is Mac McKenna. McKenna? I was representing the insurance company in that Vance jewelry stick-up, and when Steve described the killer, I thought of McKenna as a suspect. What do you think, Mac? Oh, how, by mental telepathy? You got him tucked away, safe and sound? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you got any of that stuff there? Yeah, here it is. All right, thank you. <laughs> Boy, some collection. Look at this, a billfold with eight bucks. A badge, service revolver, and a pair of bracelets. Ain't mm. much. Wish some of those newspaper boys who keep yapping about crooked cops could see this. Uh, 
What did Steve want to see you about? Down if I know, Corbett. He called me from headquarters this morning and set up the date. Any idea what it was? Nope. He didn't want to discuss it on the phone. I got a hunch it was personal. Reminds me. What? Somebody's got to break the news to Mrs. Pulaski. What? You mean Steve was married? Yeah. Just a month ago. Oh, fine. Well, who's going to tell her? You. Oh, now listen, Corbett. Come on, Mike. It's the least you can do. After all, that bullet was intended for you. Okay, Sergeant. I'd rather have stopped that slug than do this. I got a feeling this will be just as bad. Pulaski? Yes? My name is Mike Waring. Oh, of course. Steve often speaks of you. Won't you come in? Thank you. Uh, Steve isn't home right now, but I expect him any minute. Oh, I suppose I should apologize for the looks of this place. Oh, no. It's... I guess I'm not much of a housewife, but I'll learn. Yeah, sure you will. Now, look at me yucking away like crazy. Here, let me take your coat. No, please, uh, don't bother. I, I can't stay long. Well, aren't you going to wait for Steve? Well... He'll be awful disappointed if he missed you. Look, Mrs. Pulaski, there's something I have to tell you. What? Now, you've got to understand. Steve was a cop, and in his business... What do you mean, Steve was a cop? Here, you better sit down. What happened to him? Look, Mrs. Pulaski... He's been hurt. Well... Is that it? Yes. Well, where is he? I've got to go see him. Oh, you can't. What do you mean, I can't? I'm his wife. Well, I know that, but you see... What are you trying to tell me? He's dead. Oh, no. No, I don't believe it. I'm sorry. He can't be. It was my fault indirectly. You see, the killer was trying to get me. Oh, Steve. <laughs> Steve, I... No, no, Mrs. Pulaski, you've got to be brave. Steve would want you to be. Brave? I never wanted him to be a cop if he'd listened to me. Well, he couldn't have been anything else. He was cut out for the job. He liked it. Oh, Oh, please, let me alone. Well, can I get you anything? No. Look, if it makes you feel any better, I promise you I'll get the responsible party. Will that bring Steve back? Well, I, I just want you to know... I know that my husband's dead. That's enough for me. Now go away and leave me alone. Coffee, Mike? No, I've had enough. <clears throat> How'd it go? Bad. Say, so, do you know if Mrs. Pulaski has any relatives? Uh, not as far as I know. <laughs> well, I wonder what she's going to do. She doesn't look like a girl who's used to working. Well, with Steve's insurance and the money from the police pension fund, she'll do all right. I hope so. So help me, Corbett. If it's the last thing I do, I'll get him. If I don't get him first. Say, wait a minute. Huh? Why do we keep saying him? Huh? We keep referring to the killer as a him. Couldn't it be a woman? Well, you ought to know. The her or him was after you. Look, can you think of any dame you loused up recently? What about McKenna's wife? Huh? As I recall, she was very devoted to Mac. So? So she might feel I was responsible for putting him away. This could be her way of balancing the books. Oh, you're nuts. Yeah, well, there's one way to find out. I'm going up to see her. I'll let you know how I make out. Yes. Mrs. McKenna? That's right. I'd like a word with you. I'm busy. You can't be that busy. Now, look, mister, I don't know who you are. Well, why not ask me? Frankly, I don't care. My name is Mike Waring. Mike Waring? Yeah. Why, you dirty... Now, take it I'll easy. Well, keep... Behave yourself. Let me go. Will you behave? Let go. <laughs> uh, I imagine you're pretty surprised to see me. Am I? Yes. 
You killed the wrong boy. It was a police sergeant named Steve Pulaski. You're crazy. Well, doesn't the fact that I'm alive convince you? I don't know what you're talking about. Look, you're crazy about Mac. When you felt I was instrumental in nailing him, you wanted to get even. And I will. Oh, no, you won't, Laura. In this league, you get one chance. You muffed yours. Now get your coat. We're going places. Well, what do you have to say for yourself, Laura? Nothing. Oh, then you admit you killed Sergeant Pulaski. I admit nothing of the kind. You tried to gun me, and when Steve walked in, you didn't ask for credentials. You just blazed away. I'm not doing any more talking. Well, well you'll change your mind. How would you like to see your husband? Huh? I asked if you'd like to see Mac. Could I? If you cooperate. All right, I'll tell you anything you want to know. You were going to kill Waring. That's right. Now, can I see Mac? So you got into his apartment. Huh? You got into his apartment. Yeah, yeah, I did. How? My door was locked. I used the fire escape. I put you in my bedroom? Yeah. Now, can I see Mac? No. Well, you promised I me. I promised you you'd see him if you'd cooperate, but you're not. How did you get into my apartment? I told you, through the fire escape. At least to the kitchen. You got me mixed up. I meant the kitchen. What about the window there? It was open. No, it wasn't. I distinctly remember shutting it before I left. I want to see Mac. Well, what do you say, Mike? Okay. Lois, take Mrs. McKenna down to see her husband and then lock her up. Thanks a lot, Sergeant. You won't regret this. Well, can you beat that? She means it. Yeah, she's really mad for the guy. Yeah, she must be to pull that silly stunt. Listen, Corbett, I want you to do me a favor. Release her. Are you nuts? Well, you don't have to worry. She won't skip. McKenna will hold her like a magnet. What's the idea? Because I got a hunch I want to test, and without Mrs. McKenna on the loose, I can't. Oh, you and your hunches. Well, I don't think she's telling the truth. She admitted trying to get you. I know that, but there's something about this that bothers me. Well, you won't be satisfied till she does kill you. All right, then you can say I told you so. Now, what do you say, Corbett? Well, okay. But if it doesn't pay off, I'll have your heart. With a little A1 sauce, it ought to be real tasty. Yes? Mrs. Pulaski? Yes? This is Mike Waring. How do you feel? How do you think I feel? Well, I'm sorry. I only called to tell you that we finally got a line on Steve's murderer. So? So wouldn't you like to know who it was? Will that bring Steve back? Well, I suppose you're right. Still, I thought you'd be interested. You see, this party was trying to kill me, and I figure she'll try again. What do you mean? Well, I believe this woman is motivated by revenge. Now, if I'm right, Steve's death doesn't satisfy her. Only mine will. That's how we plan to nab her. What do you think? It doesn't matter what I think. All I know is that Steve is gone. Now, let me alone. Show me exactly what happened when Sergeant Pulaski came here this afternoon. Well, the first I saw him, he was banging on your door. He looked kind of uh, upset because you weren't in. That's when you gave him my note? Yeah. Then he told me you said it was all right for him to wait inside. Mm -hmm. Where were you standing at the time? Uh, right about uh, here. All right, go on. So I pulled out my pass key and opened the door. Show me how. You mean you want me to go through the whole thing again? Mm-hmm. I guess Steve was, uh, here. Uh-huh. All right, now open the door like you did. That's how it was. And then just as he stepped into the room... Oh. Mr. Waring! Mr. Waring! Back to the adventures of the Falcon.
20 minutes have passed since Mike and Eddie attempted to reenact the murder of Sergeant Steve Pulaski. Unfortunately, the effect was almost as dramatic. All right, all right, Mike. Now take a swig of this. What, what happened? You tell me. You were here. Well, I guess I... Oh. Hey, that shoulder's going to be stiff for a week. Never mind. Let me no, 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 no. You just stay there till the doc comes. I'm all right. Well, who was it? You asked me. Well, didn't Eddie... Eddie did exactly what he did the first time. He ran off to get help. Then he didn't see who fired the shot? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's true about people repeating their mistakes. So I get myself plugged for nothing. Well, it's your own fault. I told you Mrs. McKenna was her baby. Yeah, looks like you were right. Well, I'm going to put out a call for her. So, wait a minute, Sergeant. I just thought of something. What's the matter? You want to give her another chance? No, I tell you, I've got it all figured out. I know we can nail the killer for sure. How? Look, I'm going to need a little help. Where's my coat? Now, now, don't be silly. You're in no condition to travel. I'll survive, which is a lot more than I can say for Steve's killer. Now, get my coat. Yes? Hello, Mrs. Pulaski. Remember me? Mr. Waring, what happened? My shoulder? Oh, it's nothing. Yeah, yeah, this happens practically once a week. <laughs> oh, this is Sergeant Corbett. Oh, yes, I know. I, I can't tell you how sorry I am about Steve, Mrs. Pulaski. May we? Oh, of course. Thanks. I suppose I should apologize, Mr. Waring. What for? Well, I wasn't very courteous when you called. Oh, well, that's understandable. You were under a strain. Have you made any progress? Yes, plenty. Why do you think I'm wearing my arm in a sling? I, I don't understand you. Well, the killer took a shot at me. But I was luckier than Steve. Oh, then you know who it was. I think so. We even got a confession. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that, Sergeant. Because I told you there something about it that bothered me. Well, now I know what it was. Yeah? What? There's a phony... Laura McKenna only made it so she could see her husband. I don't understand. You see, Mrs. Pulaski, originally we thought this was a plot to kill me that misfired. So we went around looking for people who disliked me. That's how we came up with Mrs. McKenna. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, let's consider the actual result in the case. Now, who was the victim? My husband. Mm -hmm. Well, suppose it wasn't an accident at all. Suppose someone was really after Steve. You see the possibilities? No. Well, then we come up with a different uh, group of suspects. You remember the personal effects they found on his body? Yes, there was a wallet with eight dollars, a badge and a gun. Mm -hmm. Well, doesn't it strike you that there was something missing? No. Well, what happened to his skeleton keys? Well, what are you talking about? They weren't on his body. Shall I tell you why? Because the killer used them to get into my apartment. The killer knew that Steve was headed there to see me. Now, who would have had the best opportunity to know of that appointment and to lift the keys? Who? You. What? Yes. You were real clever, Angel, but you made one mistake. And in this game, that's enough to put you away. All right, Corbett. Prove it to her. Get over it. <laughs> when I think it was Mrs. Pulaski... Well, that's who it was, Sergeant. But why, Mike? Well, she had big financial ideas. Huh. Oh, you mean she knocked Steve off for his insurance? Mm -hmm. It was as simple as that. What complicated the deal was that we thought I was supposed to be the victim. That's why she made that second attempt. That was calculated to make us all the more certain that Steve was killed accidentally. Oh, you know, it's a funny world. Mm hmm here we had two wives, one married to a crook and the other to a cop. And the crook's wife would have given her life for her husband. And the cop's wife took his. Yeah. Well, fortunately, it very seldom happens that way. But it all goes to prove one thing. Eh, uh, what? Marriage may be a great institution, but in some cases it can be murder. Good night, Sergeant.
The Case of the Strong Sister. The Case of the Strong Sister. That's the title of next week's Adventure of the Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that if blood is thicker than water, murder is a relative condition. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon starred as the Falcon with Chuck Webster as Sergeant Corbett. This program came from New York. Fred Collins speaking. Thank <laughs> you.